Building parts with circular components in SwiftUI requires a good understanding of sine, cosine, radians, and pi. But what if it didn't? Hello and welcome to Code Slicing. I'm Adam, lifelong coder and creator of Pure Swift UI. In this episode of this series on layout guides, we're going to be talking about polar layouts, which allow you to work within the geometry of a circle without the need for trigonometry. Now, I understand that mathematics and computer science go hand in hand, they absolutely do. But what if you just wanted to create a path that had some kind of circular element to it and all that stuff just got in your way? The code it produces isn't that readable. And let's face it, it's not much fun. And programming is all about having fun. So let's see what we can do about that right now. Right, so what we're going to be doing in this example is creating a six pointed star. So I've prepared ahead of time this native implementation. If you've done anything to do with paths that even has a sniff of a circle involved, then you will recognize this kind of code. The kind of code that is stuffed to the gizzards with trigonometry. Obviously, this is very useful information and, and I'm not taking away from the advantages of understanding this stuff, absolutely not. But what I am doing is saying that most of what you're seeing here is secondary to the design, which is a star, okay? It's very difficult to look at that and think, oh, well, that, oh yeah, that's a star, that is. You know, I like my code to be readable. And this is writable, certainly. Readable, hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the classic drawing a star code that I've got here, and we're going to transform it into something completely different, readable, easy to use, and a lot of fun to boot. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to define a polar layout. We'll see what that is in just a second. So, private let star layout config is layout guide config polar. And we're going to say that the rings goes zero in a radius ratio one. Those are essentially the radii that we're interested in. So we put it like this in a radius ratio, comma, one. And now we want to define the segments. And in this case, we've got 12. So it's just a number in this case. We've got 12 of them. They're equally spaced. We now have our star layout config. So let's define our star shape. We'll call it star. And we'll leave it like that again, like we did in the first example. We'll add it down here. And in the same way as we did before, we'll use the same frame. Move that down and we'll use the same stroke. Uh, if we resume, we're not going to see anything because our path is empty. Uh, let's just set the spacing. Now we can overlay our layout the same way as we did with the grid layout, but this is different. This is a polar layer and you'll see the difference in just a second. So we say layout guide and we give it our star layout config. We go down here and we turn them on. Show layout guides is true. There it is. That is what a polar layout looks like. In the case of a grid layout, the X and Y are horizontal and vertical. In a polar layout, X and Y are radius and angle. So the X specifies how far out you want to go, and the Y specifies how far around you want to go. So now we've got this. Drawing this star shape is very easy indeed. Again, the first thing we do, create our guide which is our star layout config laid out in our rectangle. 
And then we move to the first point. So we say path move G. And we want to go to the outer one, which is two. The zero based first one, which is zero. And now we're at the top. And now it's just a simple case of looping through our segments. Four segment in. We've already done the first one, so we're going to go from one. Now each guide has an X count and a Y count, regardless of whether it's a grid or a polar layout. I mean, obviously we have protocols to adhere to here. So in this case, the X count is how many radii do we have and the Y count is how many segments. So we want to do the G dot Y count. And then we just draw each line. Path line. G. And then we can then we want to know if the segment is odd or even, because if it's even, we want to be on the outer radius. If it's odd, we want to come in. Segment is odd. Are you odd? Yes. In that case, go to the first radius. No? Then go to the second one. And then we say the second coordinate is just the segment. And my goodness, look at that. We're practically done already. Now all I have to do is say path, close subpath. And we've got our star. All of this has just vanished. And we've got this. We don't refer to a single radian. I don't need to know anything about trigonometry. All I'm doing is referring to coordinates in a polar space. Let's say we wanted to do a polygon. Polygon. The only difference really is that I'm only going to go out to two. That's all I'm going to do. Um, and then we'll just duplicate that, call that polygon. And we should see, if I resume, we should see a polygon. You want to see a triangle? So you can define these on the fly, of course. So I could say layout guide polar in that rectangle. We only need one ring. And let's say three segments. And that's too big because it's going to two. When you use a number that's outside the range that you've already specified, it will extrapolate. So all we need to do is bring that back to one. And that one. <laughs> it really is as simple as that. We can say polar layout like this. We can do this and say one comma three like that. And it will actually then give us the layout that we are interested in. Okay, lots of stuff you could do. Very flexible. Um, but I think we've spoken enough now. That is a star layout done in a very simple way, with very little code and no understanding of trigonometry required. So now we know the basics, it's time to move on to the more exciting stuff. In the next episode, we're going to see how layout guides in combination with extensions in Pure Swift UI make the process of building complex shapes based on Bezier curves a simple and enjoyable one. So join me for that, it's going to be brilliant. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time.